It's the middle of winter and this scene looks unnatural. The town in the distance should be buried in snow with the lake freezing over. But it's been strangely mild, making this unusual trip possible. I'm setting out on Lake Superior from the small town of Marathon, home to 3,000. There's a little broken ice here at the launch, but I've got a dry suit, a healthy amount of caution, and a seaworthy canoe. The sights are always great here, but the sounds are the highlight this morning. can't tell you how good this feels. Floating, bobbing up and down, waves lapping, and digging my paddle into the water. It's all glorious. Found the perfect spot to set up camp for this trip. Sheltered little cove, lots of beautiful ice formations. Thrilled. I'm just on a random spot on the Superior Coast, and this was the first spot that called out to me. It worked out beautifully. There's even a fire pit here, most likely from sea kayakers. A little old firewood, but it looks pretty rotten. There's moss in the fire pit too, so certainly not well used, but a perfect spot. Just need to find a couple of good trees for the hammock. Hammocking along the Superior Coast can be a little bit of a challenge sometimes because the trees are quite stunted, so exposed here along the coast, but I'm sure I'll find something. Oh my goodness. This is an unreal view. I'll show you later when the lighting's better because the sun's barreling down here. But this is too sweet. And it feels amazing to be back in the hammock. Oh, this is my tropical vacation in winter. I'm so happy. It's not supposed to rain, but got the tarp half pitched as well. You never know. And I brought a big sleeping bag. It's wide and extra long. And it's so much nicer than squeezing into a mummy bag. I think I'll be cozy.
getting a fire lit to make some dinner and I just had the best nap you could dream of. All these ice shards are swishing around against the shore. It's the dull roar of the light chop out there. It's nothing significant. And yeah, this view, sunshine and mild. Oh, it was dreamy. Couple of my favorite beers out. Greenmore, Southern Ontario. I am so glad I'm out here. It's like water after walking through a desert to get this in the middle of winter. Keeping dinner nice and simple tonight. Got a can of chili, a couple pieces of garlic naan, and hopefully the sky stays clear and there's some stars tonight. That would just cap this all off. Cheers. Some people will probably call this unsafe to go paddling in February. Well, it's not a lot different from ice out. In fact, it's not different at all. And I've got a complete dry suit, PFD, Aaron's close, I'm close to home. And I can even walk out of here if I need to. If I bushwhack uh, probably about three kilometers that way, I can get to the Trans Canada Trail, which will get me back. Like it's all been considered to do this safely because the last thing I would want is to have to use search and rescue out here and put them in a bad spot, so. Yep, it's all safe. And for Superior, these are incredible conditions. A little swell today, but nothing much. And then the next two days are supposed to be dead calm. Combined with these temperatures, how could I not? Plenty of cheese in there. It's a good meal. Got around to the other side of the point, just in time to see the sun go down. What a day. Back to camp, got the tarp across because it's getting pretty dewy out here. And I'm gonna have a wonderful sleep in here, I think. It's looking like a good starry night. And tomorrow, get on the water, try my luck at fishing.
frosty but beautiful morning here. Perfect for a mug of tea and some cheese and onion pierogies with some extra caramelized red onion and cheese. Mmm. I love having lunch and dinner for breakfast. Never hesitate. If you're wondering, these are the Knowles Fry Bake Pans and they're good. They have an excellent reputation for durability. But I've still, I think these are the larger ones and I still find them a bit on the small side. I like a big wide pan and as much as Teflon, I watched Dark Waters and I swear I'd never use Teflon again. It's so convenient out here when you can't perfectly regulate your heat on an open flame and things just don't stick to it like last night. The non stuck to this a little bit. If you have lots of oil or you're using something with water, you can make it pretty non-stick. It's hard to beat Teflon. Just use low heat and don't scratch it. This pan can actually be used with metal too. So it's a good pan. I've lived in Superior for almost six years now and I've never seen a winter like this. It's been incredibly mild with El Nino, not to mention things are getting warmer all the time, just in general. There's virtually no ice on Superior right now, which is not good because more water evaporates and it'll drop the water level. But it's not uncommon to see open water during the winter on Superior. The difference is that this year it's so warm that there's no ice on the shore, so I can easily get a canoe in and out. It's mild enough for it to be pleasant. And I'm just waiting for it to warm up a little more before it's comfortable paddling temperature. But can't wait to get on the water. On the water, and it's nice and calm, still around freezing, so I'll play it super safe. And this fog is sticking around, it's supposed to burn off. The sun would be super nice, but I'll take what I can get, and it always looks pretty cool in the fog here, too. And I'll do a little trolling while I'm out here. I have no idea where the fish would be on this lake at this time of year, since I have never had the opportunity to do this. But give it a shot. came around the tip of the point that I'm camped on and even on a glassy day like this a long point that juts out three or four kilometers into the lake it's almost always going to have some swell lapping up on it and even though the wave forecast is supposed to be zero today and the wind is literally supposed to be zero which almost never happens here you still never know I could get trapped on the other side of this point if something kicks up so I camp somewhere where I can even portage across the point if I had to. And I'm in the 17 foot prospector, which is very seaworthy. So far this season, Superior has set the record for the lowest ice coverage to date. Only 3.2% of the lake has ice, beating the previous low of 4.3% at the same time in 2002. Historically, 62% of Superior freezes over when the ice coverage peaks, on average. But it looks like the ice won't get anywhere near that mark this year. El Nino may be the main reason, but it's certainly not the only one. Nice to paddle out here today, beautiful ice formations, but with the sun not coming out at all, it's pretty chilly for paddling and fishing. So I'm gonna head back to camp for a bit, have a nice hot mug of tea, and evaluate from there. So 
with this damp chill in the air and no sunshine on the way, decided to pack up and head out. This is all bonus anyway. This never should have happened and it's been such a nice 24 hours with the stars and yesterday was gorgeous. So I'm happy, I'm not gonna push my luck. Probably three more months until my next paddle. What a treat it was to break up the winter like this on my favorite lake. But as I paddled out, I couldn't help but wonder how I'll look back on this moment in the coming decades. In 10 or 20 years, how will we view the messages we got from nature today? It seems like her sign language is all around us. 